and it's you know brushed aluminum or metal here oh and it came with resin get out of here came with a really small bottle of resin. That's awesome. Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Inside this box is a $100 resin 3D printer off of Amazon. Let's get it unboxed and check it out. All right, and here it is. This is the Lot Max CH10. This is a $100 resin 3D printer. Whether or not it's still gonna be $100 when it becomes available again on Amazon is a whole nother topic in itself, I guess. But I ended up scoring this thanks to my partner in crime, Andrew Sink, posted this deal over on Twitter, I think the beginning of April, and I immediately jumped on it as well. Yeah, $100 is a crazy price point. I think it was actually 130 and they had a coupon for 30 off, if I remember correctly. Yeah, paid $108 in total with tax for this, and it's a really solid machine. I'm honestly surprised at how well this resin 3D printer is built, and the best part is it actually prints. Honestly surprised with at that price point that it's printing as well as it is. And we're gonna be taking a look in just a few minutes here at some of the prints that I got off this machine and comparing it to the Elgu Mars 2 Pro, which is a mono screen resin 3D printer that should provide even higher detail print results. So it'll be interesting just to compare those even though they're somewhat in the same category of the smaller printers here. And before we talk about the prints, I wanna go over a few things about the printer and also just wanna mention here, this is the Anycubic Wash and Cure Plus. This is a huge, wash and cure station that's going to be available next week. Uh, I have a video review video coming up on Monday for this and yeah spoilers it's pretty awesome and I'm pretty sure I could fit the entire printer this lot max printer in the build volume of the wash and cure station. Is it overkill? Yeah entirely but it's fun to use. So with the printer it's got this front lifting mechanism here for the door with the acrylic panels on there. We've seen these with a few other resin 3D printers. Most printers out there have the acrylic panel, the entire panel that you can just lift on and off. I'm assuming that's a cost savings here. I was really surprised at the build quality of this as well. Everything is appears to be aluminum or metal, some metallic material here, not plastic. I thought for sure this was gonna be a plastic printer like I've seen with something like the Frozen Sonic Mini. Even the build plate's metal. I mean, they really didn't skimp out on this or in the vat is all metal as well. One of the other interesting things is the power button here on the very front of the machine. It's really fun to click on and off. I wish almost all of the resin printers had buttons like this. It's uh, just a really cool experience, something different than just a toggle switch on the side or in the back. Speaking of the side, you're gonna have the USB port on the side of the machine. Uh, one thing that you'll note here is, nope, that's not the original. Uh, this is a different USB stick. The one that was provided with that, that's where I, I'm immediately seeing a lot of the issues with the printer. I was barely able to get the provided USB stick into the printer, was not able to get almost, actually I don't think I was able to get any of the files off of that USB stick onto my laptop. It's just impossible to work with. So I thankfully found some files for profiles online for the machine within Chi2Box. So I got that set up, I loaded up some of my default Ciratech fast settings from my Elgu Mars and went to town with some prints. The touchscreen interface with the printer is pretty standard as well that you're gonna see on most resin 3D printers, which is nice. It does have a port in the back for an ethernet cable and it came with an ethernet cable. Whether or not I can actually connect this to the network, I don't know. Most of these printers have that, but pretty much don't have network capabilities when it comes to that. Uh, the build plate leveling, leveling process was really easy. There's four bolts on the side of the build plate. You're gonna loosen those and level that. Uh, where you're gonna run into some difficulties is tightening those inside of this case. It was really hard for me to maneuver the Allen wrench in there with my hands and actually be able to properly tighten the build plate within all of that build plate leveling process. I did end up having one failed print as well because I just went off and printed without leveling it at all. And then I had a few successful prints here like this deer that file that was one of their test prints as well as a, uh, a test ring print, but as soon as I tried to print anything else that I loaded up there that I sliced, it did not work properly. But thankfully leveling that build plate solved all of my issues. Because I don't remember what the dimensions were of the machine, uh, it has a build volume of 68 by 120 by 155. 
Uh, yeah, it's a pretty standard uh, print volume here that you're gonna find with this printer. I think it's the same as some of the other smaller resin 3D printers out there. The print settings, I just, again, took some of the print settings that I had from Sierra Tech Fast from my Elgu Mars, loaded that up, and uh, went to town with this and was able to run off and get some prints. Before we look at some of the prints that I did, uh, I wanted to mention what was nice is this printer actually came with a really small container of resin for you to test with. Very few printers these days come with resin for you to run any test prints with. And I was just really happy to see that. And all of the files that I printed from the uh, SD card there printed great with this particular resin. Uh, the Deer did have a little bit of layer shifting issues and I'm not sure what the heck was going on with that. Uh, I'm not really seeing that in any of the other prints that I've done after that as well. So I did run off and print some of these Amerilabs test print files again with that Seartech Fast resin and they all turned out really nice as far as I can tell. I mean it's not perfect but they look acceptable. I mean for a hundred dollars I'm honestly kind of blown away at the print results that I'm getting from this. I also printed a few miniatures from Loot Studios. I am just on a big Loot Studios kick with their files. All of them come pre-supported, which makes my job of selecting files and loading them up to print so much easier. And uh, yeah, this was a Mimic, uh, you know, treasure chest. And yeah, it turned out pretty nice. Not, not bad. Uh, I think I've seen better prints of this, but uh, again, for a hundred bucks, not bad at all. I then printed up this Gladiator file from Loot Studios. I'm not gonna even attempt to pronounce the, the guy's name there. Printed the 32 millimeter scale and the 75, I think it is, millimeter scale version of this on, uh, yeah, on the Lopmax CH10. By the way, what the heck does CH10 stand for? I have no idea. Why do some of these companies come up with these crazy names? I, I have no idea. <laughs> no idea because it's not helping me remember what the hell they're called. But again, the detail on these, I think turned out really nicely. I'm gonna pull up on screen as well and do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Lotmax prints compared to the Elgumars 2 Pro prints from the exact same files. And again, I think this for a hundred dollars, the print quality on this is just great, absolutely great. It clearly isn't gonna be printing as fast as something that you might have with a mono screen printer. I think the uh, both this guy here and the Medusa file that I'll show here in just a second were about six to seven hours long in terms of print time versus about four hours for the Mars 2 Pro. And as I mentioned, I have this Medusa file from Loot Studios. And again, I think the detail on this came out great. One thing that I wanted to try and point out that I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick up, but even on the, the snake on the front of her, her head there, you can see like the mouth opening. I'm surprised it was able to capture some of the details there. The, again, everything at 0 0.05 millimeters is coming out great on this machine. This is really a pleasant surprise, especially for a hundred dollars. I would say if you have a hundred dollars to spare and this thing is available and it's still at a hundred dollars on Amazon, buy it. It's a great machine, especially if you're interested in just getting started in resin 3D printing and looking to spend as few amount of dollars as possible. I honestly have no idea what the support is like for this machine or what the interaction with Lotmax is like. Uh, I'm sure they're a pleasant company as well, but uh, yeah, the machine runs great. It's built crazy solid, and I mean crazy solid. I was a little surprised at how heavy it was. I was really expecting a plastic machine, and it's all metal. And most importantly, it's printing, and printing well. It's a really nice surprise compared to, what was it, like a year plus ago when I did the Monoprice Mini? and it was just a slight disaster with that printer. If you are interested in picking up one of these, I'll have links down below where you can find that over on Amazon. I have no idea if this is gonna be back in stock from them any point soon, if it's gonna still be $100 or if it's gonna be $200, I honestly have no idea. But I found this good deal thanks to Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, I believe he's gonna be working on a video on this as well. And again, just pleasantly surprised to see it's actually printing, so I'm gonna be running some further tests on it. Oh, one other thing. Uh, we're really big on the resin laps as well. There is surprisingly no easy way to connect that cable into this machine. So I think I'm gonna have to drill a hole in the back of this machine to get access to the light panel. They've actually designed this 
pretty well where I can't see any of the light leaking out where you can typically see that with a lot of the other resin 3D printers, which is great for us because it makes it easy to plug that cable in somewhere. Hey, thanks so much for watching you guys. If you're interested in more about the machine, again, I'll have links down below. If you're interested in Loot Studios, have links to them as well. Hey, thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. Bye now. Power cable. Uh, Ethernet cable, that'll be interesting. Some filters, uh, Allen wrenches, the USB key, a uh, little spatula here. Here's a paintbrush, a plastic spatula, some gloves, power adapter. Nice, and it came with some extra FEP sheets as well. At a quick glance, it's really nice build quality on this machine. I was expecting this to be all plastic and it's, you know, brushed aluminum or metal here. Oh, and it came with resin. Get out of here. Came with a really small bottle of resin. That's awesome. Packaging is really nicely put together to hold everything in place. Here is your build plate. It is a metal build plate as well. Man, I really thought they would have put a lot of plastic on this. And so far, not a lot of plastic. The bolts that hold the build plate down as well as the vat are plastic. And then here is our vat, an all metal vat as well. Holy cow, I'm a little shocked at how, uh, how well put together this is for the price. Typically as well, these four bolt build plates are pre-leveled and I'm gonna assume that this is and we're gonna fire off a print as if it's pre-leveled. Also, the beautiful thing about resin 3D printers is the unboxing and setup process is just pretty much getting it out of the box and plugging it in, pouring in some resin and firing up a print. I couldn't figure out how to turn this thing on. It's the big power button on the front of this. <laughs> Touchscreen display, like on a lot of the other resin 3D printers. Pretty much the same interface as well. First prints a go. I'm also fairly surprised at how quiet the printer is as well. It also has this great lifting top here that you might see on something like the Anycubic Photon or a few of the other resin 3D printers that are out there. Uh, funny enough, I'm not a huge fan of this, but over the years, I'm becoming more warmed up to the idea just because it has a nice handle pre-built onto it and it prevents me from touching any of the acrylic displays here to help keep it nice and clean. 